Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today we have a really exciting video because I am making over Team AG's junior editor, Alessandra. I'm pointing that way because she's behind the camera. <laughs> We're talking super small space, postmodern style, which is not a style I have tackled before, but I'm really excited to dive into that. Lots of cozy accents. We need to DIY some doors. There's a lot going on in this tiny space and I cannot wait to get started. Team AG and I are really trying to delve into new styles, make these videos bigger and better, bring you tons of DIY content. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. This space is a little different than the spaces I'm used to working with in my Studio Fix series, which are usually spaces that we tackle that are of this size. The difference with Alessandra's space is that it's technically considered a junior one bedroom here in Toronto, which means that she has a wall dividing the kitchen and her bedroom area. The issue or the thing that makes this different from a studio is that there actually isn't a ton of room in her living space to have like a sofa or a television. It really is just big enough to fit a bed. The good news is, is that Alessandra really wants this room to be her bedroom exclusively. She wants it to be cozy. She wants it to be warm. She has tons of storage in the closet area. There's also room for a little entryway right off the front door, but she does use the hallway outside of the door to store her shoes. So we don't need to bring in like any shoe storage into the actual apartment. So she really just wants us to come in, make it look beautiful and make it feel like home because right now she's just moved in. It's her first apartment ever and she's really kind of starting from scratch. If you'd like to see me tackle studios where we add a lot of like multifunctional pieces and tackle multiple spaces in one, I would suggest that you check out my series Studio Fix where I exclusively make over tiny studio apartments. Okay, I'm gonna jump on a call with Alessandra. She's working from home for the morning so she can take me around her space. I'm gonna chat with her about what she envisions for this space. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk through your bedroom. Thrilled that we're able to do this for you and make it over. I also loved your inspo. It's Thank very you. you. I was telling Alana, like it took me forever to figure out what my actual interior design style is. I had no idea how to describe it, but she pointed me in the direction of postmodern. So that's totally. what it is apparently. With like Scandinavian accents layered in, very clean lines, like very you. I know you just moved in, but can you tell me a little bit about the space? It's your first apartment, so exciting. What's working for you? What's not working for you? I definitely chose my apartment because I love the natural light that comes in through both rooms. It's a small space, but I feel like the windows really open it up and there's not much in it right now, honestly. I really didn't think there was much space to fit a desk or anything else like that. I really didn't want it to feel too crammed. I know you had said you had maybe thought about turning one of the closets into an office, but you decided against that. I have too many clothes, point blank. So I needed, <laughs> I needed the closet, yeah. But I do have the luxury of like going into an office during the day. So I don't really need like a working area. And I'm also someone that consumes a lot of media on my phone and mm -hmm. my computer. I'm a big like YouTube watcher. So I don't really feel the need for a TV in this space. Got it. And I think moving into this place, I knew I wasn't going to host a lot of people or anything like that. Right. So it's really a space just kind of for me. I also feel like because you have that bit of definition in that wall, if you were to host, like your kitchen is, like I actually think you can entertain in your space for sure. Um, yeah. But I hear you about like wanting your bedroom to be kind of a separate area just for you. A lot of people think of studios and they're like, they need to do 16 different things, which is totally valid. But I love the idea of just like leaning into the coziness of it and having a space to yeah. unwind at the end of the day. Yeah, this is really like an introvert studio makeover, so. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. I think that might be the, I think that might be the headline. The <laughs> Introverts studio apartment makeover. James, write that down. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so one of the things I loved about your inspo is that like the 
base is neutral, but then you have all these really fun pops of color like blue. I draw a lot of inspiration from Scandinavian design. I spent six months living in Denmark. So honestly, it's a big part of who I am. Um, and I like to reflect that in my design too. But then you have that like fun pop of color and pattern and like interesting shapes as well. Um, like yeah. Squiggles and... Exactly, yeah. Cool, okay. I feel like I have a really great idea of what we're gonna do. A first apartment is always so special and I really want this space to be like a true reflection of you. I'm so excited and I fully trust you guys. I great. wouldn't pick anyone else to do my space. So <laughs> I've actually feel... been kind of nervous about it. I'm not gonna lie because no. it's, like, it's your first space and like you have such a defined sense of style and yeah, but I'm excited. I just feel grateful to have the opportunity, so don't worry at all. You're the best. Okay, thanks, Alessandra. This is so great. I will. Yeah, thanks for chatting with me. I'll see you back at the office. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So it's been a bit since my call with Alessandra this morning. I'm really excited about this one because I think it's a style that I haven't really tackled before. And I'm really leaning into mixing like bold pops of color with a lot of neutrals. So a lot of whites, a lot of off whites and creams. But then the pops of color we're using are this blue headboard that I found from article. It's velvet. It's almost like a navy blue, but it's really bold and has such a great shape. I think having a headboard in an interesting shape is gonna be a really great focal point kind of as soon as you walk in the door. She has this rice pendant shade hanging up already and I actually think we should keep that. I'm usually the first one to be like, change all the lights, but this is great because it is leaning into that more Scandi style, it's neutral, and these swiggle mirrors. Alana, I'm hoping, is gonna be able to thrift some. They're so fun, so like adding in that interesting shape. I think we are gonna try and attempt a DIY with Graham. I'm going to ask him to source some bifolding doors for Alessandra's closets. And Peony and Honey, a great DIYer that I follow on Instagram, these are her closets, so she took bifolding doors, added molding to the bottom, added cane webbing to the top, and I think we should do something similar and then complete them with these amazing squiggle hooks that I found on Urban Outfitters. And I'm thinking we paint out the closet doors in this lilac color. It's always so nerve wracking doing a space for a Team AG member because if they hate it, I'm gonna know. <laughs> Let's head into day one prep day. We have got a lot to do. Hi guys. <laughs> So what you haven't seen or what you don't see is that we actually just shot a full episode of Studio Fix yesterday and the day before and we are just back at it, back to back makeovers. We are tired but very, very excited to make over Alessandra's studio apartment. She is like so deserving of this makeover and I can't wait to see it all come together. I'm gonna show you where we're at. You guys have already seen before is but her stuff is in here now. She's moved in and there's boxes everywhere from the stuff we're bringing in. But anyways, let me just show you. So you come in through the door and this is her bedroom area. Well, really her like living space, which is what we're making over. These are her two closets. One here and then one here. Some hooks right here. And then she has this cute little shelf that we're definitely keeping. I think the tenant before her covered it in peel and stick tiles with black grout. So we're already kind of heading into that like postmodern style to begin with. Here with the crew. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start unboxing stuff. This always feels like Christmas. Oh, <laughs> just some foam. Cool. Fun! These are so Alessandra. Look at these balls! They're cool. I love it. From Homesome. I love it. Look at those nails against the red, though. This is where we are at. Graham has patched all the holes. There was a ton of holes in these walls. I took the curtain tension rods off and the curtains. And we are gonna start by installing the headboard, building the bed, which is those two boxes. Let's do this. Woo! Yay. Wow, look at that blue though. 
You might think, why are we going with such a large headboard in such a small space? But we're just like decorating the wall. We're using the wall space to our advantage. And this is really like the hero piece of the entire space. You'll often see me bringing article pieces into people's homes. And that's because I really want to give people pieces that can evolve with them, move with them place to place. And yeah, article quality is just like unmatched. All my days work. <laughs> so we're actually gonna build the bed frame before we mount the headboard, just to make sure we get like the height of the headboard right before we start mounting things on the wall. We went with an untreated pine bed frame from Ikea, super simple bed frame. If you're looking for something really basic, really inexpensive, this is the bed I would recommend. You can also paint it and stain it because it is untreated pine. So we're just trimming off the headboard piece to make it solely a frame. We are using painter's tape to get a really clean line. This helps the wood not splinter and just gives us like a nice smooth cut. Smell that fresh pine. Smell it. It does smell great. Mm -hmm. I'm cutting the next leg, so I need to wear protective glasses. I don't have any. These are the next best thing. They're very cool. Thank you so much. Just like that, we have a frame. Okay. This is great. Done for the day? <laughs> yeah, it's over. Now we are mounting this gorgeous article headboard. We are hanging it just above the trim so the side tables are at a really good height. This is here by Danny's pencil. Stole it from her? She gets me. <laughs> We are using a level to make sure everything is nice and straight, specifically these side tables so that Alessandra's mugs aren't like falling off. This is an old Toronto home with tons of character, which basically means that the house is actually on a slant, but we're gonna call it Charming Quirk. We don't wanna fight it, we're just letting it be. If Graham had a merch store, I think that people would buy stuff from him. Let me know in the comments down below if Graham should have a merch store. We could sell it through alexandragator.com. His carabiners? Yeah. Sewing patterns. A sewing pattern. If Graham had a shirt with his face on it, what would the text say? We're still workshopping. We're okay. Still workshopping. Yeah, if you guys have any ideas down below, please let us know. Um, and we'll get on that. This looks luxe. It does look luxe. As Amanda would say. Now it's time to move on to those closet doors. So what we did for this DIY is thrifted two sets of doors and then Graham cut out the top where the little slats were. We wanna get rid of those, we don't, we don't love those. After that, he's adding wood filler where needed, sanding everything down. And to make it so that we're using the same amount of cane and so that these doors look even and cohesive, he is adding a panel of wood in like the little window area. Genius, I know. We're starting on the closet doors. I'm beside the garbage can. And we're gonna start by painting them the most beautiful lilac color you've ever seen. Brilliant. Wow. Yep. Yep. But the idea is that you flip it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I love the smile of like, yep, I know. Oh, just in time for Easter. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a little Easter egg color, like a little mini egg. Yeah. We are painting these the color raspberry ice. It is the perfect lilac color because it has gray undertones. So it doesn't feel like, you know, a six-year-old girl's purple bedroom. It feels like a little, little sophisticated. Look at Alexandra in her sunglasses. It's a sunny day in Toronto. Life is good. It's actually one of the first days we've been able to shoot outside since last year. You might notice that the purple looks like white. That's just because the sun is shining. I can assure you, when we bring these in, you'll see that they're purple. Magic. Okay. Everything 
Instagram says now, he's just like, that could be my tagline. No rhyme or reason, just. So we did two coats of paint on each side of the door. Alana popped the cane into the bathtub to let it soak so that it's gonna be nice and stretchy when we actually start installing it to the doors. You might not know this, but you can actually get cane in tons of different weaves. There's not any right or wrong weave to choose. It really just depends on the look you want for the project that you're working on. For this project, I chose a tighter weave because I wanted to conceal as much as possible. These are closet doors after all. So we wanted to hide all of that visual clutter. Now we are going to put the cane on the back of the doors we just painted. The cane's been soaking and yeah, we're just gonna staple it to the back. You always wanna soak your cane before you install it so that it dries really nice and tight and you wanna be able to stretch it in place. This is really simple, but you do wanna make sure you have two people, one person pulling and stretching the cane, making sure it's really straight and that it's not warping, and then another person just using a staple gun and stapling it down against the frame. You'll see tomorrow, once this all dries, it's gonna feel like the webbing in a tennis racket. You want it to be kind of bouncy and really, really taut. So a while ago, Alana was at H&M home on the weekend and she texted me a photo of this vase and she was like, we need to do something with this. Like I need to buy this. I think it'd be so cool if we turn this into a lamp. And then when Alessandra's bedroom came along, we were both like, yes, the time has come for us to do that lamp DIY. So the first thing you wanna do is drill a hole in your vase. This is where the electrical cord is going to basically come out of. We are drilling the hole on the back of the vase so that the cord just like flows nicely out the back of it. You don't wanna do it on the bottom because then the light won't sit properly. How do you feel? Post game interview. I feel like strong in this moment to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so now we are feeding the cord through the vase, you'll see it's popping out of the top and we're adding the stem from our cord lighting kit, taping up the hole we just made so none of the foam we're gonna be adding in the next step seeps out the back. Oh wait, wait, the battery's gonna die. I can't do it, I'm scared. You, you wanna do like a little tester? Do a little yeah, tester. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah. Here, just do, just spray a little bit here. Great, great, I got it. It's so whipped cream. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's whipped cream, no problem. <laughs> Sound? A little but... <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be like a beautiful B-roll moment. <laughs> Just take five, it's okay. Now we're using expanding foam, and the idea here is, one, we wanna make this vase really solid. We wanna fill it with something, because as soon as we put a bulb in and a shade on top, we don't want it to like fall over. We want this thing to be sturdy. So the expanding foam is gonna dry and it's gonna harden. We are also adding it right to the top so that it dries around the wire and that little stem piece we put in so that everything stays in the center of the table lamp. We are using chopsticks to hold the cord in place. You want this to be in the center of your light. You don't want the cord to be like over here. You want it to be right in the center, just like in a regular table lamp. What's happening right now? I'm just protecting the pause. Oh. I also probably would advise doing this at the earlier step. Like the first thing you do is just wrap your vase to keep them protected in case the foam like overflows, expands way outside the vase. But we, we realized a little bit later <laughs> in the process. Make sure you wear a mask and do this in a well ventilated area. We had all the windows open, but you could also go outside. We are gonna set this aside, let the foam dry. It's gonna expand overnight and we're gonna finish it tomorrow. Okay, we are done prep day. I'm feeling like a little dewy, you know, worked hard. I cannot wait to reveal this space to Alessandra tomorrow. I'm so excited. It's just coming together so, so nicely. So I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow. It is day two, it's time to install the doors. They are dry and ready to be hung. So we are using these special hinges. The technical term for them is non-mortise hinges. These hinges are actually really cool and easy to install, very DIY friendly. With DIY Danny's pencil, sure. No problem. They sit on the surface of your door frame, so you don't need to chisel into your door frame like you do with regular hinges, and they're great for panel doors just like these. 
installing a normal door with inlay hinges can take up to half a day. It's so finicky. You do not want to try this yourself if you're not experienced. Use these hinges instead and thank me later. No problem. No problem. I always drop stuff. Thanks, girl. So it's not just you. It's good. <laughs> I'm like a bad DIY queen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Woo! Great. Okay, now we're adding these gold handles to finish off these closet doors, bringing in those elements of postmodern with the curves, a little wave. I'll link these down below, they're super affordable. I'm obsessed with these knobs. I saw them on the Urban Outfitters website and I was like, we, we need to use these and they just look incredible. They look absolutely incredible. Now that the closet doors are up, I'm adding a new curtain rod and some curtains. I feel like I say this in basically every episode that we ever do, but it is kind of amazing what a difference a well-hung curtain rod and curtains can do to a space. Suddenly it just looks like styled, elevated. Living in a small space also means that you don't have to be afraid of going decorative with your fixtures. Like everything counts, everything is noticeable. So why not have fun and just go with something bold like this curtain rod that I found. I will link it down below as well. Rattan accents, sleek black metal, so good. I'm also hanging these curtains five inches above the window frame to draw your eye up and make the ceilings look way taller than they actually are. Wow, pulls a hammer out of her pocket. For book storage, I am putting some of these Umbra floating bookshelves in this little corner. I think this is the perfect little book nook. Oh my God. <laughs> I've used these in many makeovers just because they're a really functional and decorative way to store books. Underneath, I'm adding in this cute little side table from HomeSense. Alessandra can move this around her apartment, but I thought for decorative purposes, it would look really cute under the books. Okay, so this looks like a science project gone wrong, but I promise you, it's gonna be a beautiful light. Filling it with foam made the vase really sturdy, so it's not gonna like move around, fall down, like it's, it's solid. And now we can move on to wiring the light. You wanna follow the instructions on your lighting kit. I will link down below the one we used, but it's pretty simple. We just wired a light. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's working. No, it's working. We'll do a little test runes. Oh. <gasps> you were shocked. You doubted me. No, I didn't. You did, you, you were shocked. I'm just excited that it's working. Wow, we like literally built a light. What the heck? It's a little hat. Sorry, it's like actually a top hat. Like a Monopoly top hat. <gasps> what? What? This is a vase? This was a vase? I love this. I feel like it goes with so many of the inspo photos Alessandra pinned, and I just love the oversizedness of it. Oh, and it was also thrifted. Go to your thrift store to find shades. There's like so many to choose from. Update for you. We just wanted to make sure this light was super secure. So Graham used a hole saw to drill a perfect hole in a piece of wood. And he secured that to the top of the vase. And now it's like really sturdy. I think that the foam could definitely work. We just found that we didn't put enough foam. And so it wasn't like as sturdy as we wanted it to be. So I think this wood like actually looks really cool, but it also, keeps everything just like nice and tight and secure. I just wanna make sure that the closet opens. Yeah, it does. Great. Next, I'm making the bed with this flax home bedding. I opened up this box and it smelled like sweet, sweet lavender. These sheets are buttery soft and I feel like this off-white oatmeal color just really warms up this space. 
These sheets are made by a woman-owned company. They're all so awesome. It's also a Canadian-owned business as well. To make this look like a hotel bed, we are adding three layers of pillows, putting her bed pillows against the back of the headboard, and then these larger size pillows that Alessandra already had. They're a square shape, and then tinier checkerboard decorative pillows as well. They really just make this bed feel complete. I actually had a really hard time figuring out what rug I wanted to put in this space. I feel like a rug is usually make or break in a design. You either start with it or finish with it. This is why mood boarding is so important. You wanna really get a feel of how a statement piece like this is going to anchor the whole space. I went for this neutral colored rug, kind of similar to the duvet, but with this eclectic pattern on top, really trying to merge the Scandi and the postmodern together in a rug. We also thrifted these IKEA wavy mirrors. We're bringing them back from the 90s. I don't think IKEA still sells these mirrors. Looks like art, but they're also functional and are gonna bring in a lot of light into this small space. Now we are moving on to the finishing touches. I can't believe this makeover is almost done. Searching for art can be really overwhelming, especially when you're trying to achieve a specific style. So what I would recommend is going on the website you're searching for art on and sort by color and style. So in this picture, you'll notice that the blue picks up on the blue headboard and it just like really kind of ties everything together. This is actually a downloadable piece of art that we purchased online, downloaded it. We sent it to Poster Jack. If you guys are in Canada or the States, Poster Jack is an awesome place to frame and blow up art and make Make it look really professional. So we paid not a ton to have this printed and then Poster Jack framed it, blew it up. It looks amazing. We are adding extra storage under the bed. You can never get enough storage in a small bedroom and these are just utilizing all that dead space under your bed. We are hanging a mirror to create a little mini entryway to give it kind of that entryway feel and really kind of visually divide the entryway from the bedroom. We are hanging hooks. I'm using some gold nail polish to conceal the screws. The last two touches, we are adding this very cool bust candle and this drapey plant. I'm so thrilled that Team AG could pull this off for Alessandra. She deserves it so much. I will say, you guys, this is the first time I've been very nervous to reveal a space in a very long time. I had full on butterflies in my tummy. I just want her to love it. Let's bring her in. Close your eyes now. Okay. Well, you know the drill, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay, can you walk me through what your space looked like before? There was no character to this room at all, and it was really incomplete. I'm honored that I got to make over your first apartment. This is such a big deal. Are you ready? On the count of three, I want you to open your eyes, okay? Ah. One, two, three. Oh my God, guys! <laughs> I love the squiggle. This is not the same room. I know, right? Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> and the headboard is like my favorite color of all time. Okay, we love to hear that. <laughs> Oh my god, it's perfect. Like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, you got that all over my no, fingers. Okay, go. All over my fingers, Graham. Are you serious?
Extreme danger. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen an extreme danger. No, you weren't joking. Danger. You, I thought you were joking. No. Graham! <laughs> I thought you were joking. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's a, it's just flammable, that's all. It's, it's... Oh, we light a match. Guys, look at this, though. <laughs> wow.